from Times Square in the heart of the greatest city in the universe, it's All Night with Joey Reynolds. I'm Big J Sorensen from 101.1 CBS FM, New York's Greatest Hits, with a shirt that fits. Our guest tonight, Guardian Angel founder and radio talk show host, Curtis Sliwa. Comedian impressionist seen on VH1's I Love the 90s, Stephen Scott. Author of The Tactics of Hope, Wilford Welch. Musical guests, founder of the legendary Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, winner of the Best of the West Performer Award, John McKillen, along with Martha Redbone. Plus, TV Legier and the Ooh La La Quintet. And now, the guy who has a better chance of getting a role on the next Star Trek movie than the begging to be included, William Shatner, Joey Reynolds. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks, audience. Yeah, where is it? Where well, is the audience? at home, oh, where they home. belong. Yeah, well, they're in bed. They're clapping. Thank there you. They there are. they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I borrowed something from Conan. Absolutely. <laughs> We have a, a leftover audience because they're still waiting for him to make a comeback on NBC. It ain't happening. I know, it ain't going to happen. Not, not now. Not When you give someone $40 million, that, that's really the end of the deal. <laughs> you know, if you give them a check like $40 million, you think the guy's going to come back from work? And, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's chutzpah. Yeah, right. That really is chutzpah. Uh, we're on the air from Times Square, as everybody knows, and tonight uh, the Discovery, not the channel. Right. But the, uh, that, that great mission is over, right? They, they brought the ship back. They did, yes. After, after how much time was it in space? Ah, they were a couple of weeks, three weeks almost. Yeah, yeah. and the thing, the thing came back. Uh, William Shatner, whom you mentioned on yeah. Star Trek, made the announcement that mm -hmm. the uh, Discovery is back. He, and he, he gave that little Star Trek-y announcement that, yep. we've all, that we've all come to know and love. Is that it is available? Flights are available on a price line. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> now he he was uh, a little bit short on his announcement because he didn't tell you the rest of the story. You know, I mean, That's... which people don't want to share this easily. But uh, I I think uh, the people who were here at our party yeah. for tonight we had a we had a client party. Yeah. They all left on the next ship. <laughs> and we put them all in that spaceship and sent them out because we knew these people are Looney Tunes. They want to buy time on the show. What are they thinking? Oh, what are they Please thinking? Smell. These are people who don't belong on this planet. <laughs> but do you notice I was treated like the red carpet? Yeah. I walked, I walked into, the, into the NASDAQ tonight and I, I was really surprised because my name was on all the walls. There, there were people handing out flyers with their name on it. They got this little, I don't know if you saw this card. I did. They got a card with my picture on it. They're nice. handing this out. It lists all the channels that we're mm -hmm. on. They're really starting to market me. And it makes me very nervous because, you know, when you're a secret, yeah. then you can fool everybody. Right, when you fly under the radar, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. but you know, some woman challenged me on being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on what? Facebook. and really? said, Yeah. She said, well, come on, come clean. You aren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And you're, I looked uh, and all the names and under the R's. So I, had, I called Art Volo in Detroit. Uh -huh. And I said, send me a tape of where I was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. The night was in 1995, I think it was, something like that. So I wrote the person back on the email. But uh, the thing is arriving. Now, this week, I got to show two things. One, I promised last week, which was the interview with Oprah right. backstage. Right. At uh, at that uh, uh, NAPTI convention, right. I keep forgetting convention, the name. I, yeah. I keep wanting to say NASCAR. That's <laughs> uh, so she was not under a car. Right. <laughs> but we were we had an intimate chat, and I have that. It's and I will have that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Now the one with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where I was actually inducted, mm -hmm. that thing I'm going to play on the air later in the week. And Good. I'll play a little bit of it in the week. Cause Good, because I don't think people know that. People do not know a lot of things. Yeah. But you know, some of these things you don't want them to know. True. And you, 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 know, you don't want to push the refresh button on too many bad things either. No. Uh, like, you know, how I got fired and the 38 or 40 jobs I've had. You know, I mean, these are things you run a, uh, These days it's fashionable to, uh, to get the boot. But you live in the now. I, I, I what? You live in the now. No, I live in Harlem. No, but you live in the now. Uh, I live in the now Harlem. The now Harlem. <laughs> yeah. The high price Harlem. The high price spread. That's it. But tonight's party was great. We had everybody from uh, ad agencies and, mm -hmm. and corporate people to come. The corporate caca. Yeah. You know, the people came and they dressed very nicely. And I wore this same suit you see me in now. <laughs> and I, uh, I had my 
Curtis Lee was here tonight, so I got my guardian angel pen. I think I showed that off last week a little nice. bit. Uh, we're going to put uh, uh, some ads on the air here in the next couple of weeks because, you know, you've got to pay for this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's either this or go out door to door or do a telethon where we have a tote board and UJ standing there. Uh, anyone from Pepsi? <laughs> there, was there anyone from Pepsi? I've been touting that. You know, I mean, you I would know. think Pepsi has paid for this thing. You would think. So far. Right. And, you know, when we get them, they're going to really pay. <laughs> I'm going to have them by the Guayunis. <laughs> No, they're going to really pay for this one. I think, I think our show has been uh, coming along. It's gotten a lot, uh, you know, it's, it's more comfortable. It's, yes. It's not, Very it, it doesn't have what everybody else has. Well, that's what's good about I, it. I think so. I mean, I think because, you know, everybody, you can get what, you can get the big name celebrities everywhere. You can get all of this, uh, the 12 writers and the comedy. You can get, what is this, Pepsi owns, what? Dr. Dr. Brown's? Is that right? <laughs> After all that, <laughs> the whole thing was see, gone. I was trying to say, I was trying to, to, you know what I was doing? I held up Dr. Brown's in deference to Pepsi. Right, right. Now we find out they bought they, it. They bought it. They own it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win, Joey. Well, you know what? 60 Minutes, which is a CBS show, is going to be on NBC. Did you see that? What the hell is going on in this uh, world? I don't know. It's crazy. They're on MS, MS NBC or the CNBC or one of the NBCs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. CNBC. 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 That's not They're going to be on not... there. I saw an ad for it. Really? 60 Minutes, which is... CBS's show is going to be on NBC now. Multi-level marketing. It's all part of CNBC. Of, CNBC. CNBC. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, everybody has become a whore. <laughs> I mean, really, they all they they all just do everything for the money. Money now. Well, I, we should I, just go over to Ninth Avenue. Having a hard do time saying it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it for the m m uh, m money. Uh, no, you know what? Can you imagine me having a price? That, that you can actually buy me, you know, my, with my personality. I have a price. <laughs> you have a price. Yes. No, but I'm a guy you can't buy easily. No. I mean, I was, listen, when I became a disc jockey. Now, this is the sincere part. It was ahead. fashionable mm -hmm. to take money to play records. Everybody did it. Dick Clark did it. He got away with it. He got away with it because he was Dick Clark. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you what happened. And, you know, I love Dick. Dick's a good friend. Yeah. But, but, you know, he was before, this is a public record before mm -hmm. the U.S. Now that someone's going to challenge this No, one. it is true. This will be on Facebook tomorrow. No, no, now, right? it's true. They challenge every, everybody tries to find fault with everybody. Why don't you just accept me the way I am yeah. and stop screwing around with yeah, me? Yeah, stop. Leave me alone. Leave him alone. He's old. Yeah, but give me your ratings and your money. <laughs> All right, anyway, Dick Clark was, was uh, before the U.S. Congress taking... He was owning, am I in the shadow here? No, I'm you're good. In front of the light. You're good. He's, he's, he was taking money from uh, uh, record companies, or at least accused of He owning, owned pieces of record companies. He owned pieces of yeah, records. He, right. didn't, oh, he didn't write. He didn't do publishing. He right. wasn't a writer. And, and the Congress did not want to ruin his reputation. The U.S. Congress. Yeah, but Alan Freed. So they Freed, said nothing. But Alan Freed took the fall for it. Alan while. Freed, well, Alan Freed was a drunk. You know, Dick Clark was a beautiful personal image. You know, when you have a very nice, clean image, yeah. people don't screw around with you when you're rich. Mm -hmm. They don't, they're afraid. People don't screw around with you when you're powerful. They're afraid. They don't screw around with you when you're pretty. They're, but when, if you're a, an ugly toad who's doing something wrong, you're going to prison. <laughs> That's it. You're, Alan you're, Freed you're was not like, pretty. Guys watching this at Rikers right now are hating me for saying this. Well, you know. But you're all ugly. But you know what? You're you mentioned you're, the, the what? people that are outside watching the show, they don't know Alan Freed. They probably don't know Dick Clark except the old guy that's on the, the, you know, the New Year's Rocking Eve. No, they, they know Dick they Clark. Don't Come on. Know. don't. I, see, you don't give the public credit. You're just one of those disc jockey idiots. <laughs> You've got to start giving the public credit. The public really knows more than you're saying they know. I said young people, the well, outside people. They don't know that much more, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> we love people, though, don't we? Yeah. I mean, this show is oh, a, is a, is a this show This is a that, very positive, upbeat yes. show. Yes. Well, I don't know how upbeat we are. But we, we, uh, we went to meet the crowd tonight. You know, when the, when the party was over tonight, we were stalking them with our cameras. We got that? Oh, yeah. Guys, yeah. Did, we, did we shoot that? Mm -hmm. We also caught a crew outside shooting a, a show, which we're no. not going to run tonight. But they were doing their own show outside. <laughs> I mean, they're doing they're, on our they're turf. doing what I'm doing, but outside without a budget. How dare they? You know, I, well, it's the way of the world. Welcome, <laughs> you know. Somebody always figures out a way to do this free. True. But what we're going to do tonight now is take you to the party after party. And this is when everybody's real nice and loaded, <laughs> and they don't. You know, we caught them at a, at a disadvantage tonight. Do they have an open 
open bar up, up, it, upstairs? I, I think they did. <laughs> did they? <laughs> I All had right. Coca-Cola. I, I haven't no had Pepsi. A, I haven't had a drink in 30 years, but tonight was the night that I would go back. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you. So here's what happened when we left the party. Here's what here's what we did. All right, now this is a party that I'm attending, which is supposedly I'm I'm the host of the party or something. I don't know. Now Binky is. is Hello. Did you give me some makeup? Yes, a little bit of powder, but we're not done. Michelle, can we talk about it? Come here over here. Who are you? I'm Lee Sheridan from Full Throttle Magazine. How are you? I'm well. How are you? you. Don't just slip out on me. Okay. John McEwen, of course, who's wonderfully gifted and also funnier than I am, so he won't talk. How are you, John? You hired me to not talk. That's right. Now, John. John McEwen is, as you probably know famously, the uh, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Well, thank you, Joy. And John went to school with Steve Martin, which makes him just as funny. We're going to graduate in about a month. <laughs> You're great. I'll tell you, I feel a whole lot more like I do now than I did when I got here. Well, are you are you satisfied with tonight's event so far? It's wonderful, and the show hasn't even started. Are you going to play? And yes, I brought some people to play. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be... Aggravating. It's going to, it's going to be aggravating. Well, with you on the air, it's probably going to be somewhat aggravating. Very aggravating. Because nobody can get an edge in word-wise. You're done. I'm done. Am I stopping you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you liking the party? Oh, I'm loving it, man. There's a lot of, lot of potential up there. Potential what? <laughs> potential what, advertisers. Are you picking up girls? No, no, no. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite day. I'm running into Myra. Come on out here. Hi. What's your name? Camille Saturday. Hi. Oh, what a great name that is. Yeah, thank you. Monday through Friday booked? Uh, Always. I I'm really so. sorry, but I have time for Joey. <laughs> I always have time for Joey. Well, it's I, wonderful. I, I love your show, by the way. Thank you. Did you like Thank the you. party? I loved the party. Because it's... Did you it get was, drunk? Uh, I'm not telling. Do I, do I look drunk? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I just wonder. I, I, <laughs> no, I didn't. You know, usually people have to get real no, loaded to I, like my party. I didn't. No, I didn't. No, no, it was a really good party. <laughs> What's your name? Come on over here. Don't don't hide. Irv Burner. Irv Burner. Nice Irv to meet you, Joey. No, no, no. Oh, that's elevated door closed. <laughs> Those guys are going to a new level of their relationship. They're going up. So who are you? I'm Jerome Lamar. Hey. Jerome, you're the guy who dressed me. Whoop, whoop. Yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, you're the guy who's the fashion. Well, yeah. I mean, you didn't put the clothes on me. Yeah. Just, Although, you, you know, know. Hooked you up. there's another fee for that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got Sid Bernstein here, Bob Asaccia, and Gloria, hello. You should have made me famous, please. I just want to tell you that you are one of the best talk show hosts in the entire continent, not just New York City. And I know what I'm speaking of. I know. Because I've had experience, Joe. You may not know that. You're the best talk show host in America. And when that warm weather shows up, you're going to have thousands of people watching. You, not just around the country, radio and television. Look at all the followers you have. But right here on Times Square. Look at the followers you have. They want to get off the elevator. Sid's followers. They feel like they're stuck in a blackout. Hey, Joey. Hey. Frankie, how are you, Frank? Good. I'm cleaning up the rest of the garbage cans here. I have to. Joey, only way I can get on the. Oh, wait, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Put the You're light very on. Bad with they, they told me to go towards the light, and I am going to the light. The you know, only way to be on Joey Reynolds' show is to dump the garbage cans into all the receptacle areas. Thank you very much for putting me part of your show. Some friend you are, good man. Oh, clean the garbage, you can be on the show. Oh, wipe the floor, do something, you can be on the show. Joy, thank you. He's the best. Now I have to go dump the dumpster. I need that. clean the toilets. Bye bye. Did you show these guys uh, the set here? I don't believe yes. that. You made it, Joey? Yeah, we yes. did. We did earlier. We had a lot They loved it. Everyone loved it. Oh, I see the bar is closed. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I don't need to fall over you. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> you know, if I'm going to fall, I want to go in your general you were direction. You saying the perfect first date when the, when the door is open and there you were. I know, I fell head over here. Yes. <laughs> now, you just came back from Paris, right? Yes, Paris. And you dressed me like someone who just got out of a sewer. <laughs> well, we got Sid Bernstein here. Oh, no. Bob 
Masaccia and Gloria, hello. I want you to make me famous, please. <laughs> I just want to tell you that you are one of the best talk show hosts in the entire continent, not just New York City. And I know what I'm speaking of. I know. Because I've had experience, John. You may not know <laughs> that. You're the best talk show host in America. And when that warm weather shows up, you're going to have thousands of people watching you, not just around the country, radio and television. Look at all the followers you have. But right here on Times Square. Look at the followers you have. They want to get off the elevator. Since followers. They feel like they're stuck in a blackout. Hey, Joey. No, I want, to, I want to talk to this guy here. You know what he's here for? There's an artist named Phoebe Legier. And she's, she's, you know, is, is she really French or is this like a joke? Is she really French? <sighs> I don't really know, to be honest. I, I just met her. This is like a routine. At a bar. And she I met her at a bar. She was singing, and she said, can you come do my hair? And I said, okay. That's so I'm a, here. What a pickup line that is. Yeah. That's a good one, right? Yeah. You want to come do my hair? And the rest of me. <laughs> come and do all of me. And the hair is included. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you for using the elevator or the 12 steps. <laughs> Going down. Joey. Yeah. Fast. Thank you. The 13th step. There is the 13th one. Hey, that's the elevator. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming to Thank you. See you on TV tonight. Yes, sir. I hope you look as good as you feel. Then you have to use your line, Joey. You must have said something wrong. I don't know if I ever want to do this again. <laughs> this is a welcome party for our clients, and they uh, are going to see themselves at home and cancel. <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, Phoebe Lejeur, Le Bouge, uh, Le Bouge, right after this uh, short time with the sponsors we wanted to have, but didn't get. <laughs> celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. Well, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at 5. We're all over town.
I saw her playing famously at Joe's Pub and fell in love with her because she's so quirky. Love that word. We love quirky. Here's Phoebe Legere. Phoebe, come in with that. I, I hope she's not carrying that accordion. That's love a, the hair. Love that's an instrument hair. of war. Look at the hair. Oh, look at that. No, no, no accordion. Wow. This is a beautiful look on the black carpet. <laughs> Hi, Joey. Hello, Phoebe. How are you, Hi, sweetheart? Hi, sweetheart. Oh, I'm so happy for you. We don't have a, a red carpet here Where yet. do I sit? Wherever you like. Right. It, Isn't condition. this wonderful? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's great. Oh. Hello. Wonderful to have you, of course. Where's your accordion? Is this for me? Yeah. It's sitting right over there like a bomb, ready to be detonated. Don't say that in Times Square. You know the story <laughs> Les Paul tells of the accordion, right? He loved the accordion. Oh, does he? Well, there's a, a trick, you know, in New York City at Christmas time, people take their cars often into the city to buy gifts, and they put the packages in the, in the car, and they, they usually uh, leave them there, but sometimes they forget to put them where they need to hide them, which is in the trunk, yeah. or they forget to lock the door. Now, there was a gentleman who had an Joe, accordion. Joe, you're telling an accordion joke. I'm telling the story of the accordion that Keep Les Paul going, tells. but hold my hand because I don't want you to hurt my feelings. I won't. So the man came, so, so and the he man was very what, upset has, to find that he had more accordions. Uh, is that how it goes? That's how it goes. <laughs> oh, it's a very mean joke about a very important American instrument, Joe. Yeah. I want you to take the accordion very seriously. It's a noble instrument. Tell me why. Because it's, it's the heart and soul of America. It's the sound of the immigrant masses huddled, yearning to squeeze their accordions. Some people came to Ellis Island with nothing but an accordion and a salami. Joey. They turned them around real fast and sent them home. Oh, I don't think that, that works. Joey, you love the accordion. Admit it. No. <laughs> but I like the way you look and the way you play, and it's fun. And you have fun with it. You have fun with yourself. Well, it's a... I do. It's yes. true. It's a beautiful instrument. You know, it's a wind moving through reeds, and you walk with it hanging on the breast. You know, it's very different from the guitar, which is a phallic instrument. Yes, of course. Mm. And the accordion is something that if you play in New Jersey, you can usually squeeze a seagull until you get the right key. <laughs> Joey, I'm so proud of you. I love you on television. You do? Yes. Well, I mean, I've always thought of you as an intellectual, as a, somebody with a ready wit. But now I, I see you as a kind of a, a, a stud. You're, you're uh -oh. like a super masculine, handsome guy sitting here. You're a real host. Uh -oh. I mean, you're a real manly, gorgeous, hunky host. Jay? We have the right show. Jay? What we have? I'm sorry. It, does they change hosts while, <laughs> while we're on a break there? Something happened. No, Joey, you look great. Well, thank you. What, what does that mean now? Does that mean that I'm in your zone? You are. And this is, <laughs> this is my zone. Of course, I love Times Square. Yeah, I'm in a residency right now at Iridium with my band. In a residency? Yes. You mean you're living there? Well, in a way, my music is living there because uh -huh. I'm there the third Tuesday of every month, right down the street at 51st and Broadway. So I've joined the Times Square family. Wow. Wonderful. And I love Times Square. I love the history of Times Square. I loved the sleaze of Times Square. But Can you I do love, that again, by the way? I love the Disney. Yes, okay. I love the Disney Times Square, too. I love yeah. the lights. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just terrific. Where, where, where else have you been? <laughs> you well, must have been somewhere else. I have. I, for the last five years, I've been going to school. Teaching what? Well, I've been teaching and I've been studying orchestration and studying how to conduct an orchestra and how not to write symphonies. Not that accordion symphonies. thing. You're not teaching that. No, no. Good. Well, my real instrument, Joey, is the piano. Okay. But because the accordion is so <laughs> spectacular visually, a lot of people have enjoyed taking pictures of me with the accordion because it is a sexy instrument, Joey. I'm sorry that you don't know that. Oh, but it's, it's one portable. Of the it's portable. And you can get close to people, whereas when you play the piano, you know, you're... You're, you're chained to this hunk of wood and steel. It's one ton. Yeah. And it's very 19th century, and it comes with all kinds of ideas about, you know, iconic, macho, super artist posturing. But, but the accordion but nobody, but nobody is plays, real. Nobody plays Lady of Spain on the piano. And Liberace played the piano. And, you know, I mean, it's Lady he of Spain. It was wonderful. That, it's that song that kills me. You don't like that song? Well, it's an accordion song. You don't, you don't ever hear that on a piano. 
Nobody it pulls out be. their the guitar and plays Lady of Spain. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm a composer, and so when I play the accordion, I usually play my own songs. Uh -huh. That's what we do at Iridium with my band, the Ooh La La Cocktail. Mm. When are you there? How often are you there? I'm there the third Tuesday of every month. I right see. around the corner. I know, 51st I know where Broadway. it is. So what, who, who do you have with you on the stage? Then? Oh, I have such a wonderful band. They're all musical geniuses. John Burr, who started off playing when he was very young with Buddy Rich. Wow. He yeah. was on the tour bus with Buddy Rich. On the bus? Yes. He's an older guy. Buddy. No, well. no, John is young. Yeah, John is still young. He started when he was a teenager. You know, we all start in music. Music has no age. Well, Talent to be has young, no you'd age. have to be in, his, in the womb at that age. I mean, you know, Buddy Rich was, was how old now? I mean, I, I in other no words, you're not, you're not doing this with young musicians, are yes, you? Yes, I am. I have a 15-year-old violinist. Your you son. No, I wish he were my son, but he's kind of like a spiritual son because when I first heard him play, it was as if we'd been playing together all our lives. This sounds like something Michael Jackson would say. You know, I was on Epic Records with Michael Jackson, and I had a chance to get to know him. Yeah. And you know what? He was a great guy. He's very sweet. He was a and wonderful very gentle. person. I knew him in L.A. I knew him very well. And he was uh, hanging around Thrifty Drug with a yo-yo. <laughs> Joey. Quite a guy. <laughs> Joey, you're so great. Uh, but, you know, Michael was about to produce a record for me when he died. And yeah. uh, we were friends for a long, long time. Did Wonderful you get your guy. money in front? <laughs> <laughs> Janet's in, in Chicago right now. You know, Janet I like Jackson. her, too. And I like her very much. Yeah. Nice I like the, family. I like the family. Nice now, family. you know what? I, and I'm just joking. But, you know, I, I want to just have some fun with at their expense. You don't mind that. A little bit. I wasn't going to have yeah. it at your expense because apparently you cut my water off with the with the accordion joke, which you hate. But I want to hear you play I've the accordion. I've heard them. I've heard that. Now you like the accordion. I, you're warming I like to you. it. I you're like warming you. to it. And now that the, you have a 15 year old with you, I want to see where you're going to go with this. The accordion is only one of many instruments I play, but it's one I way know. that I'll I can bet. break out from behind the piano and get close to the people. And go. like you, I love to be close to the people. Well, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. I really do. I do too. I like people. All right, so get out, get set up here, and we're gonna we're gonna hear you play. Okay, and you got Joey. this 15 year old. What's his name? His name is Jonathan Russell. And what does he play? He plays the violin. I call him Johnny Jazz, but he's, uh, I met him because he studies with my film scoring teacher, Ira Newborn, one of the great music men, and it's all coming together. I couldn't be more excited about this band and about our new CD, which is called the Ooh La La Cocktail. Mm, well, let's, let's take a little break here, and then we'll, uh, we'll get together with Phoebe Legere, and we'll do some Ooh La La. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. If you're like me, you probably don't have a lot of free time to exercise and keep yourself in shape. For me, the answer is the Ab Glider from Proform. I can't tell you how much I love this amazing machine. It's a great fat-burning cardio workout, too. And it's fun. Unlike other ab machines, the Ab Glider combines circular and crunch motions for a fast, fun workout of your entire midsection. You engage more muscles, get a better cardio workout, and burn twice the calories of other ab machines. I went from an 11 to a size 4. 20 inches total. It's really easy and it's fun. With this offer, you'll get an onboard workout computer, Elizabeth's 3-Minute Rapid Results DVD, and her amazing abs instructional DVD, plus her amazing abs eating guide, a $159 value, free. Try the Ab Glider now for 30 days, risk-free, for as little as $14.95. If you're not totally satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You can't find a better way to get better abs at a better price. And getting started is easy. Just call or go online to proform.com. Are you holding the remote right now? It's nice to be in control, isn't it? To fast forward to the good parts? Oh, hold on. We're getting to the good part. If you're receiving a structured settlement from a lawsuit, you know it is not easy to wait for payments, especially when it could be 10 or 20 years before you collect all your money. What you may not know is that you can skip ahead and receive a lump sum of cash now. Call CBC Settlement Funding for a free, no-obligation offer about your structured settlement. 
Whether you access all or just a portion of your future payments, we put you in control so you can fast forward and collect your money now. If you need cash now, call the number on your screen and find out how CBC Settlement Funding can help. We'll guide you through the process so you can take control of your finances and get your money faster. Call CBC Settlement Funding today. went to Vassar, which is a girl, was a girl's school. I guess it's co-ed now. It's co-ed. Smith's was a girl's school. Yes, my two sisters went to Smith. That's a money school. Well, we're yeah, rich. Yeah, well, we're you rich. know, the, the girls went to Smith. It costs a lot of money to be in show business. No, 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 wait. The girls went to Smith, the guys went to Amherst. And Amherst was where the president's kids went to in the earlier days when we had Republican presidents. You know, they had the money. That's what we used to think. Was it true? Uh, well, nowadays, Joey, it's mostly talent, you know, and intelligence that gets you into schools. Is it really? The money doesn't get you very far anymore. Yeah, well, try paying your student loan with your intellect. I'm trying. You're going to be thinking <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> and you're standing in front of Jonathan here, who's uh, 15 years old, trying to make his break in show business. You already got him dressing funny. <laughs> He looks as cute as can Hi, be. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Good to meet yeah, you. You too. I know. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the band be behind you here, you got a young lady who went to Vassar with you. What's yes. What's her name? You want to give a name here? Her name is uh, DJ Sidecar. Hi, DJ. How are you? My favorite two letters. <laughs> and who do you have next to you over here? This is Sir George Leonard. Hi, George. How are you? Nice Good days. to meet you, sir. And? And the great John Burr on bass. Well, John, I know. John's, he's legendary, and he's got yes, that he instrument of choice, <laughs> which uh, you can't get on a subway with. <laughs> Unless you're riding the BART in San Francisco because you can take a bike, right? There you go. How do I know that? The BART is elegant. <laughs> but Jonathan, you're playing with Phoebe, who's a legendary, fun music maker, and she's also a wonderful teacher, right? She teach you? Yeah. No, she's not. She, oh, she you, teaches oh, me on stage. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, Phoebe, what are you going to play tonight? Well, I thought we'd start with our theme song, a oh, song good. that uh, that I wrote based on the, our family motto, which is "Crazy White Trash." Oh, I love that motto! Boy, you must have a wonderful <laughs> family. Where's your double? Uh, never mind. <laughs> ready? Oh, uh, we're ready. Well, Just because I'm curvy, just because I'm cute, just cause I'm a woman, I don't mean I won't hit you. I've been living in this city since I was 17. I got a way of swimming, let me show you what I mean. Oh, I do love Jesus, who has compassion for us all.
off of that sugar, Chris. Oh, sugar, Chris. boy. I wish I had you at the party earlier tonight. You know, I would have put you up there on the bar. <laughs> That's where we Phoebe belong. Right. I want see, the purple hair. You'll see Phoebe. She's over at the Iridium playing uh, once a week, and, uh, and she's got the band with her. You guys are great. Thank you so Thank much for you, being Joey. with us. Thank you, Joey. Super. We'll be right back with Curtis Sliwa. <laughs> Oh, man. If you insult me, I'm going to break your nose. A couple of chicks from uptown came downtown Friday night. They said some stuff about me. I tried to be polite. They said she's got humps like a camel. Makes me proud to be a mammal. I tried to... Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over five million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Curtis just left with Batman. He'll be back in a little while. I think he's, they're both after Spider-Man. I'm supposed to see the show this week, and uh, I wanted to take cameras there, but they don't allow them. Really? It's too many safety Any, violations. Anyway, we got Gary Brown here tonight, who's a retired NFL player, and he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, but uh, he played with the Green Bay Packers and won a Super Bowl in New Orleans in 96 with, with uh, his friend Brett. Uh, offens offensive lineman, played occasionally and professionally for, not pro occasionally, but pro professionally for three years. Mm -hmm. And he's originally from Long Island. Here's Gary Brown. Gary, surprise guest tonight, just dropped in. And he's big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, we don't mess with him. Hello, Gary. <laughs> there he is. How are you? How are we doing, Joey? Wonderful. How's everything? Good. Nice to see well, you again. Well, I haven't seen anything this large <laughs> since the refrigerator. Huh. What happened to him? Oh, he's not as, a as athletic as I am. No? <laughs> no. Well, what, now what happened to him? What, Richard Perry, right? Uh, William Perry. William Perry, William yeah. Perry. William Perry. What happened to him? I don't know. I think he did a few things. He went into some, uh, I remember he did some prize fighting, some boxing. He did a little bit of this. Oh. A little. I think there was a story on him not too long ago about, uh, uh, life after football. It wasn't. It wasn't too uh, warming. It was kind of cold and sad. What do you guys think about changing sports? I guess we've had a little bit of. Will Chamberlain tried that. A few people tried it. A yeah. few people tried it. Um, I, I think uh, you, you're kind of blessed to have one sport, mm -hmm. and if you can do two and you think you're good at it, then so be it. You know. Yeah, I mean? that's why. To I, each his own. I, I, otherwise, I'd be a Mormon. 
Well, failure is not that bad. You know what I mean? No. Sometimes when you have failure, it's kind of closure, you know? Yeah. Uh, Michael Jordan did it. He went to baseball, and, and he had the same situation. And he's not the only one. Mm. There's a lot of players. Bo that, Jackson, that, another one. Bo Jackson, yeah. yes. Yeah. What about a little bit of, uh, of, of football now? Are you still want to play? Who, me? I wish I could. I, I would love to. I just had drastic spine surgery, so it's kind of hard to play now. But I, I think... Uh, once it's in you, there's not, nothing that can replace that. You know, yeah, you working, it, doing anything it. else. I don't care what you're doing, trading, buying, doing whatever you got to do. You, you never get that 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 fill, that that energy rush. That uh, that uh, there's nothing that can fill to fill that void. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Well, I, I have a little football in my jeans. I'm from Buffalo. Oh, family in Buffalo. It's cold up there. It's real football. It's, it gets even colder when you try to get in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we have, yeah. uh, I, I, you, well, you know, I go back a little bit with Cookie Gilchrist mm -hmm. and, and Jack Kemp and O.J. back in those days. Yeah. And those are, they were exciting. They were exciting football days because we were building a team mm -hmm. and a stadium. Yeah. And the team was wonderful in those days. You know, we, had, we actually worked uh, hard in, at, at making Buffalo a first-class sports city. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I love Buffalo. It's a blue-collar town. Yeah. Um, they have some loyal fans, and, and you know I'm from the era where they've been to a few uh, playoffs and Super Bowls, but they could never quite get over that hump. Yeah. And um, since then, I, you know the fans out of there are still loyal. You know, uh, and it's a great time. It reminds me of Green Bay a lot. You know, Green yeah, Bay. Yeah, well, Green Bay, of course, is uh, such a classic with Vince Lombardi. Yes. And well, you know, uh, have you seen the show Lombardi? Yes. Um, great program. I think. Uh, any coach, any player, anybody that has anything to do with it um, has a lot to learn from that. Uh, it's yeah. very uh, heartwarming. It's very uh, enthusiastic, you know? Well, he, he was, he was uh, one of a kind. You know, my favorite Lombardi statement is, I don't think it's in the, in the play, mm -hmm. but he, he talked about going ahead three and going back one, and going mm -hmm. ahead two and then going back one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's all forward motion by design, but you don't always make it. You don't always make it, and, and your goals in, in life, your goals in the football field, your goals anywhere you are is to do the best that you can. And as far as you push yourself, go a little further. And if you just come back one step of failure, it's not failure. Keep moving, you know, keep it going. And, and I think that's what he instilled in, in the game today. And, and, and anybody that has to play the game, you'll learn that from him. It's spiritual, spiritual. Yes. Uh, what about and, you? What happened and with you? And away from the pulpit. <coughs> what, happened, what happened to your to your your health? Oh wow! Um, I played a, a cup. Uh, I played in the league for a few years, and I played everywhere. I played overseas in Europe for NFL Europe. Um, I played in Canada for three years with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and out of all of that, I only had two uh, knee scopes, which I was pretty blessed with. Yeah. And then I was doing construction on Long Island, and there's a gas leak in a building. I carried a, a lady, an elderly lady. I was working in an uh, assisted living program. I carried an elderly lady out, and I hurt my back. Mm. And now I had, uh, I'm a year, a year and three months um, from thoracic spine surgery. And uh, it's life after football, you know? This is what all the negotiating is about right now and, 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 and life after football because I'm pretty sure my spine was weakened through other means uh, as far as football and stuff like that. Uh, a 120 pound lady didn't do it to me. Um, but uh, it's life after football and it's what the negotiations and everything like that it's about right now. So how old were you when that happened? Um, two years ago, 37, 38. Young I'm guy. 39. Young, yeah. It's a young guy, but for that sport, you're uh, retired. Old, you know? yeah, old. Why is that? Why, why do we think of uh, uh, the gladiators? I, I don't know, I, 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 I don't have a real good sense of the Roman history, mm -hmm. but they probably died at 27. I you know. think that's kind of old because I think <laughs> when they were warriors, they were warriors at 22, 23, 24. So I, 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 if you lose at being a warrior, it's death. <laughs> well, a but, football um, player is our warrior. Yes. yes. In, in, um, our, in our society, that is a gladiator. I think society looks at the television and they see the stars and they see yeah. the 10, 20, 30 guys that play for 10 years and on, but they don't see the thousands of players that sacrifice their body 
through uh, Pop Warner, through college, through professional, and only get to play one or two years. I was blessed to play four years in the NFL, and then, you know, and carry on after that. I played a few years after that, but they don't see those guys. They don't, you know, we got helmets on. It's not like baseball. It's not like anything else. So the interior linemen, the, uh, any position, but it's just um, they only get to recognize and, and they could deal with and, and relate to the stars. So they say, oh, this guy's been playing for 20, 30 years, and he's making so many millions and yeah. millions of dollars. They don't forget, they forget about, or they don't recognize or realize the guys that have been playing for, you know, two, three years that's out there taking a beating in the bang, you know. Uh, a quarterback takes, you know, five, ten hits a game. Offensive linemen, defense linemen take a hit every play of the game, you know. And I those think, are things I, that are not I, I think we've at. watched too much Jerry Maguire. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you, uh, you, you have any thoughts about the NFL strike? No, the lockout, yeah. I do. I, um, the thoughts I have on that, and I don't want to elaborate too much on that because there's a lot of things going on, but I think uh, it's just too much money that something can't be negotiated on. There's too, many, too much history that something can't be changed. There's too many things that are going on in today's society that we're recognizing now. Now, for example, when I played, there were many concussions going on. You get dizzy, it's toughen up, you know, get back in there. It wasn't, now you get a pop and it's, oh, you have a concussion, you're out for two weeks. You know, and I'm not saying take anything from the players today, and I'm not saying that we were any tougher than they were, but now we're recognizing and we're realizing how dangerous these hits are. And, and you know what, in, in a multi, you know, billion dollar industry, compensate the people who are putting their lives on the line. So we come back to that all the time. You know, it always comes back to the in inequality because there's a, a great deal over here and there's the, the guys who are taking the biggest risk get, you, you, for some reason you don't get paid the right money and it's a short shelf life. Was that, was, is that accurate? Um, I don't want to say the right money because everybody's nego you can negotiate your own contract. You can yeah. you got so what you agree to play on is what you agree to play on, but um, life after football does exist. You know, yeah. and 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 the NFL, any professional or even TV, when they're done with you, they're done with you. You're, you're to the sideline. You're yesterday's news, and I think uh, players should be compensated for that. And I'm not saying for money, but I'm just saying their health and, and their, their yeah. lifestyle and things like that should be compensated for. Um, without that, you know, uh, you could play football your whole life and, and not really make the money that you have thought you've made as a young man because that money is fast money. It, it, you're young. And it, no matter what you do with it, you could invest it, you could spend it on whatever you want to do. But the little bit of money that you make is not going to last you the rest of your life. And uh, you have to still go out there and work. Before this, I was doing construction. I was a real estate yeah. appraiser. I was doing security work. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you did so a lot these of, things. You, you had to learn new professions. Physical labor. Yeah. And, and now I can't do physical labor anymore. So you know, and that's just my small story to the hundreds of thousands that are out there. You know what I mean? So and everybody has a different twist, a different story. So where do you, where do you go from here? You know, what do you do to make the game better so that this changes in the future? You know, it, it's hard to put a finger on it, but let's work towards it as hey, a group. Hey, Joey, yes, you've done a lot of good stuff for kids, so do you want to talk to him about that? Yeah, well, I know that. We had, uh, uh, I went to see Dan Loria play Lombardi, mm -hmm. and um, I saw the opening performance, and, and they were speaking, you may have even been at that one. No, I swear I wasn't. They were, they were talking about the work that's being done to raise money for kids, and I know that, yeah. uh, well, uh, I think uh, they're, they're our future, and I think everybody agrees with that. But um, I'm getting into uh, a lot of mentoring programs and trying to talk to kids to, to educate them on the future and, and what people tell you or what your situation is do not have to be what they say it is. You could make it better. It's up to you. Choice is everything, you know? You could, you could make a choice not to go down the street with those guys. You can make a choice to do better with your life. You can make a choice to, and all I want to do is give them the resources on how to make better decisions, you know, and, and mentoring and hands-on, one-on-one is the way to do it. What about the Giants? We're going <laughs> to do something? 
I, I think the Giants are on to something. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, a, Boy, they're on something. I don't know. A, a friend back there, she's a Giant fan, and, and uh, she told me how much she liked the Giants. I think um, they're on to something. Uh, I think they're going to be a little bitter about Plexigo maybe going to the Jets. We don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah. But um, Conklin's got a, a, a good thing going over there. The players believe in what he's selling you know they're buying what he's selling and, and that's a good thing as well as with the Jets you know they got they're, they're, they're buying what their coach is selling um, he just sold it to him three years in a row but we'll see where it goes from here do you have a website uh, no I do not um, I have an email that's about it but what uh, about what about a website for for some of the work that you're doing some of the service work well I do a lot of work through a buddy of mine's uh, website um, uh, Mario um, it's uh, I don't know what it is offhand, but uh, yeah, I do a lot of work through his website. People can search it. What's the name of the organization? Uh, you, know? uh, you could uh, actually just email me at bigbrown68 at AOL.com and uh, let those pour in and we could shuffle them out the way they to come in. I, I'm in a venture of a few different things. Um, so with the way they come in, the way we'll send them out. Are you still living in Long Island? Yes, sir. Oh, is that your curse? Is that some sort of a punishment? No, I think <laughs> I enjoy the island. I, I, uh, I've been away for a long time. I, I, I lived, like I said, in Canada. I lived in Spain. I lived in yeah. California, Georgia, all these places. And, uh, you know, home is home. I always come back to home. I never compared Long Island to Spain. <laughs> Me neither. The, the water, the, the air, everything is so much. The food is so much different. But... Uh, Home is home. Mama's home, daddy's home, so I always come back to visit them. And it's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Shep and the Limelights. Yes, that's it. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, you for appreciate having it. me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. So you'll come back again, right? Uh, anytime you have me. Anything and you're doing, I'm a part of. Are you having an operation coming up? Or I, I, I didn't get that quite. Or well, um, I, I just had uh, some shots in my uh, uh, this epidural steroid shots, and they're working pretty good. So uh, a laminectomy might be in my near future within a couple of months. Um, we're not quite sure. I'm going to go over it with the doctors, but... This will be my second or third surgery, so we're going to see how that plays out. Well, God bless you. I wish you thank you very good much. Good luck with the, especially with the operation. I thank mean, you your very health much. is your wealth. Yeah, thank you. And you're a young guy. Come on. Yeah, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot to do. See, uh, you have a lot longer to live. I have a lot more work to do. Then there side. is money for that playing you do. Oh uh, yeah. So you got to see the money should have been over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's small thing to a giant. You know, if you're not comfortable with yourself, money's not going to make you any more comfortable. That's true. It's just going to hide true. you. You know, uh, I'm content. I'm happy. I'm blessed, and I'm happy to be above the surf today. You know. Good attitude. Great. Yes, great that's the only have way that. to be. Thank you for inspiring us tonight, too. Thanks for having that. me. Because there's a lot of people in bed right now that wish they could play football, <laughs> even uh, for one I'm, day. <laughs> I'm not mad. It's over. I'm happy it happened. Well, coming up will be uh, Curtis Sliwa. Uh, he just got back from an evening out with Batman <laughs> here in Gotham City. And I think also Curtis is going to be sent to Tripoli. Uh, he's going to take care of the subways in Libya. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Joey Reynolds, get ready for this legend in his own mind. It's going to rock your world. Hi, I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V-shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced, it targets your entire core, upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobic burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy and takes just three minutes a day. And watch this. 
simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat-burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds, I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, we'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love Handle system, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try AbSicle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your AbSicle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. Shish kebab. Shish kebab. That's what you become if you don't behave in our city. We put you on a skewer <laughs> and we give you Curtis Sliwa to torture you That's a little right. bit. That's right. You get to skewer it <laughs> because he has uh, been a definite activist in keeping this city safer than any of these comic book heroes. And one of, a, one of my really favorite people and heroes in the world and also a really good radio guy and a television guy too. So uh, let's bring out We've kept him awake too long, yeah. and he's been a, a, a guardian angel. Here's Curtis Sliwa. <laughs> oh, man. How do they keep you waiting? They know you got to do a morning show. Uh, that's these, a matter of my very dear Kumbari Cheech. <laughs> these guys are miserable. They don't understand, Curtis. They don't know what it's like to go to bed at 8. Very good. And get very up good. at 3. Curtis, Or 2. You, you know, sir. Jay nice Sorensen. Yep. yep. Oh, so Curtis, the apple. The apple. The deuce. You know, I did my very first TV show with Joe Franklin in that building. Across the street. When I was just a young little whippersnapper, no more than knee high. But you weren't in a window. Uh, no, I wasn't in a window. I was in a box. <laughs> I was in a little box. I got two words in edgewise. I said, hey, Joe, could I say something here, Joe, forever in a day? And now we're here for Hoffman Beverages, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> The uh, radio career that you have right now, I want to promote it a little bit because you work feverishly. I mean, you know, you work very hard, and I know that personally. I have my little guardian angel pin, so, you know, I've been to your event, which is every year, and everyone loves you and honors you in the city because we know of your work, and, and it continues, and you've made it a really passionate, I, I would say, legacy because there's so many people now who are doing what you're doing mm. in other cities too yeah. around the world yeah and so besides honoring you for all that because we do that once a year and and i don't want to kill your humility <laughs> but i want i want to bring up the career part for a minute because you had and I, my heart goes out to you because you work so hard and and, and that's that is all set the the work in the in the community and you, and you have set that in, in place. But this radio and television business was just so up and down. And now I found out tonight that you not only do the morning show, yeah. then you come back and do the afternoon show. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's this? Yeah, You're not, what uh, uh, what do you, what, why do you have to do two things like oh, that? Oh, hey, come on, Joe, you know, it's these suits, these mockers, these muckety mucks, they throw nickels around like manhole covers now. <laughs> You know, if they could squeeze a little bit more out of you, get a few more commercials out of you, a few, a little bit more radio time, they get it. And let's face it, for years, I was feeding the pigeons progresso breadcrumbs and talking to them, <laughs> talking to myself, blah, 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 blah. and then shaving myself, talking to myself. And then somebody said, I'll give you a microphone and you could actually talk to other people. And I said, I'll take as much time as I can get. So. Rule of thumb for Curtis Slewa, if they give you the time, take the time, because just as soon as they give you that microphone, they'll take the microphone away from you. Well, you were a guest on Joey's show at WNBC Radio. We met 25 years ago. years ago. Yeah. But on WOR, too. He's been on yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a few times. But, Curtis, you know what? The, uh, the city is so fun to play with, and you find the place where there is the most anger. Mm. 
And, and what, is it, what is it really all about at this point? Is it, is it because we don't have the jobs at this point in history, right today? Or is it because we don't have the economy right? Or what is it? No, I, I crawl into the belly of the beast all the time. And I see different looks in the belly of the beast. It's about dysfunction. It's about young people who have no direction, no role models. They're basically thrown out and they're told survive. Forget, they get into kindergarten and first grade only because they have to go to school. And then they're taught now what we call character education. Do you know what this is, Joey? How to brush your teeth, how to wash your hands, you know, saying happy birthday to me, happy, and how to wipe your tuchus, how to wipe your butt. <laughs> they should know that already. This is character education. Uh, this takes up a good portion of the day. Yeah. And we're not dealing with truly the subject matter that these kids need. Like, for instance, civics. When we went to school, even if you went to reform school, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of civics. They learned about what your government is, how you can participate, be a good citizen. They don't have civics anymore because they're too busy putting the condoms on the banana, mm. learning character <laughs> education, everything that has nothing at all to do with school that you should be learning at home. At home. But when you go to home, mm -hmm. Oftentimes the Mac Daddy, he ain't around. Mac Daddy shows up once a month and it's basically to snack on the check, mm. get a little bit of action, you know, to shout a leg and then he disappears. He's missing in action. Sometimes mom is laying up on the sofa eating the laced potato chips watching <laughs> Oprah. And you say, who's giving guidance? Who's a mentor to these kids? Kids are out on their own. They get angry. And naturally, if they're going to get angry at yes. themselves, who yeah. do you think they're going to take that anger management moment on? The nearest you, person, right? when you're the big V. V for victim, yep. and they decide to beat you down or just bully you or rob you or turn you in to an example of what they'd want to do to themselves. Because really, it's all about self-hate. And they hate themselves because their life has been miserable from the day they popped out of the womb. So how do we fix that? Well, clearly, you have a society that has to say these kids have to be taken away out of this environment. And if they were rich kids, what would happen? They'd be bucking Broncos out in Montana, outward bound. They'd be in some Swiss chalet. You know, the rich parents would say, I can't deal with little Johnny. In fact, what do you, where do you think Fred Trump sent Donald Trump? Where did John Gotti Sr. send John, a, John Gotti Jr.? The New York Military Academy. It cost a lot of shibolis, mm -hmm. a lot of lettuce, a lot of schedule. But these two men, as big as they were, as successful in their different fields, yeah. Couldn't control their own son. So what did they do? They had the U.S. Military Academy deal. And this is what happens when wealthy people have problems with their kids. Yet when poor people have problems with their kids, they end up in J-A-I-L. And it costs us yeah. three times more. $55,500 a year. No frills. That means they get ass sandwiches and unsweetened Kool-Aid. And you know that's considered a violation <laughs> of their rights. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking sirloin steaks. <laughs> what, about, what about education itself now? Is it, I, I, I heard what you just said, and I agree that it starts with the family. But in school itself, since the students uh, don't respect the teachers and the teachers can't do anything about it, what do you, how are you going to settle it? Oh, well, first off, you know, the kids, uh, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. hey, Weisenheimer, I know what you mean, please. You, you've said it 52 times. <laughs> they're sleeping, they got their heads down, they got the iPod in, they're cell, they're this, they're that. And more importantly, the teacher is virtually shackled. Right. Used to be. <clears throat> right. If I acted up, the teacher would hit me so hard, my mother would feel the vibration. <laughs> <laughs> then my mother would hit me, right? And my father, who was a merchant seaman, would feel the vibrations out at sea. Now, it's gotten to the point where the kids oftentimes will dictate what kind of discipline is extracted in the classroom. And that's wrong. And we quickly beat up on the teachers. But the teacher's job is incredibly difficult nowadays because they didn't have to deal with these kind of problems. Now, look. When I was going to school, I went to PS114, which was recently on the chopping block. It was spared its execution. But I remember I was in class 5A with Jungle Janie Wilson. 32 kids. 30 kids were Jewish kids. One was Dutch Reform, Beth White, and I sat next to her. I was the other Gentile. First grade, right? I mean, first uh, period. They're reading the New York Times. They're getting the New York Times delivered to them in, in homo. Before that, my current events was the weekly reading. Remember? Yes. The big pictures, no yes. five dollar words. Right. All of a sudden, Beth White says, watch, watch the kids. Jungle Jenny Wilson hasn't even asked the first question of current events. 
all kids, ooh, 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 like horse gang. <laughs> well, what are they reading on mine? What are they, John Edwards, a mind reader, the channeler? <laughs> and nine times out of ten, they got the answers correct. Now, these kids were programmed to study yeah. and to follow an educational mm -hmm. route. Now, my cousins, Lenny Beans Beyond Chino, Crazy <laughs> Sal, Crazy Vinny, I would say, Uncle Vinny, why is he Crazy Sal, Crazy Vinny? Oh, when he was a kid. You know, your aunt dropped him on his head. He's got a metal plate in his head. <laughs> Every one of my cousins supposedly had a metal plate in their head, right? A bunch of gabones. And where were they? I'm in 5A, right? Advanced class. They're in like 5EFG. <laughs> they ran out of letters for these guys. They can only so keep was, them so long, you know? Right, but that was the difference. Yeah. It's the family you came from. Nowadays, it's Asians. It's East Indians. They're from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. I, I can't even find these countries on the map. They come over here. They don't have two nickels. And yet they become the valedictorians, right. they study hard, they make it something of Families. education is the route to level the playing field. Anything else, you're just running your mouth a mile a minute. And vocational education. When you went to school, when you went to that school, trace. I went to school, yeah. you were in metal shop, right? You were in wood shop or you were artsy fartsy, yeah. you know, you were painting pictures. Not my style. But in metal shop, if they saw, wow, you're taking aerials off of cars, you're making zip guns, you shot yourself in the leg. You know, you're showing a lot of dexterity. I would suggest you go to Westinghouse <laughs> Technical High School and focus on what you can do with your hands because you're already showing a pension for maybe becoming a blacksmith, you know, a gunsmith. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Anything vocational education. Look at all these professional schools. Apex, this, air conditioning, maintenance. Why aren't we teaching these kids in high school? We should. Well, clearly they would have a career path instead of what many of them do. They just waste our tax dollars, mm -hmm. waste their time, until eventually they're either in jail, we'll they're listless, out. or they're getting a Pell Grant, which is another ripoff of the taxpayers, and going to one of these professional schools. Because I mean, the Connecticut School of Broadcast. <laughs> How many of us have been graduates which, of the Connecticut School which of Broadcast? Which I've been teaching at for a I, while. I have a, daughter, I have a daughter who calls Fresh Direct before she goes to school. She wants to have her food delivered. Why, why eat these plain lunches? Exactly. No, you're, you're right with what you're saying about that. I think I, I believe the role modeling, if I can review it quickly, uh, I think the uh, uh, unshackled teachers is a smart thing, and I think the spoil the kids rotten is definitely what we've done in enabling them and in ignoring them so that they can get away with whatever they want to do, and we support it by giving, fueling it with money so they will go away because we both of us want to work in a family as a rule. Not everybody's that way, but as a rule, I think. Yeah, and it's not just limited to poor kids and the oh. belly of the beast. It's in Leave it to Beaverland, Father Knows Best, Little House in the Prairie, rich kids, middle class kids. And we're ending up with lethargic, apathetic, indifferent kids who really, remember, this is the time they should be idealistic. They should yeah. be wanting to take on the world. And we've basically neutered them. In fact, neutering them might not be a bad <laughs> yeah, thing you know, consider it. all the problems they get involved with. So, Curtis, you'll, you'll hear on the radio, but you can watch him on television because listening to him is seeing him. <laughs> He's the uh, most visual guy on the radio in the world. And I love when you were doing the morning show on ABC. I thought you guys were terrific together. I think I said that to you privately, and I want to restate that because I think it was the perfect New York morning show. You guys, you were great, just great. And now you have And, and now show. you're on Apple, on the Apple, which is 980? 970. 970. 970. Did I move it? Yeah, you moved yeah. it up a notch. In the morning, right, you wake up, you hear me talking to you like some male yenta, right, from 5 to 9 in the morning. Then so nice, the suits, they let me do it twice. twice. I come back, drive time from 5 to 7, and I'm battling with a guy who can't even speak English. The, the Latinos, they're taking over. It's Hershon Barrero, <laughs> Abel Diario. He's got the sombrero on. He's declaring Puerto Rico is independent, autonomous. The guy's Mushuga. And then I do the slices of Sliwa on Saturday morning from 7 to 10, live and local. Mob talk, the geriatric espresso sipping psychotic killers of organized crime. I can't, I can't get enough of that end. Then I talk uh, the Weeby Thuggin' Updates, which is about the Uzi toting, dope sucking, psychopathic killing machines. <laughs> I love this. Can you save some radio space for me? Once I'm in a while? telling you. No, no, I want to do 24 7. <laughs> now, you know, Curtis, we got uh, Phoebe Legier. Yeah, You've seen her, right? Back. Oh, Phoebe. She's the, she's well, she's the music version of the way you're talking right now. Yeah. I don't know, you my know. Phoebe. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to bring her out in a minute, and don't forget to. Please join Curtis Saliwa in anything that he's doing because you'll have a great ride. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>
BAMS Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call any time to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAMS Auto Body. We'll get your vehicle fixed, no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades and new custom built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100 or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. idea of a good Broadway musical, the lyrics by Cl Curtis Sliwa and the music by Phoebe Legere. <laughs> now, I don't know where that show would go, but I think it would have a long life in New York. <laughs> Here's Phoebe again, again, without the 15-year-old, because he had to go home and go to bed. <laughs> but, you know, these child labor laws, boy, I got to talk to Curtis about that. Here's Phoebe. <laughs>
Great, Phoebe. So you'll find Phoebe over at the Iridium. Uh, I, I think the idea of you and Curtis would be great together. I, it's a, a rant Let's and roll. Let's do it. <laughs> <what> Let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> Woo! All right, so we're going to take a, a little bit of a powder here and then come back with uh, Stephen Scott. And we're, uh, we're on here with this Times Square broadcast, and Curtis loves being in the window because he can keep his eye on, on John Gotti. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. He has. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Damn, it's something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. Oh, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm your grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. Uh, Stephen Scott is not the only guy around here who does stand-up comedy. You know, I mean, Curtis Lewis has done some stand-up, too, you know. He's a stand-up guy. Uh, so first, let's bring, let's bring uh, Stephen out here, and then we're going to show him something about when Curtis was funny for a living. Here's uh, Stephen Scott, Marvin's son. He hates that. 
Following me, you crazy paparazzi bastards! Leave me alone! I want to be left alone. Sound like Greta Garbo. How are you, man? Steven! Once, can you introduce me as who I am? You always mention no, my family. Because I know you hate it. I know. I like the tie, by the way. It means we have to take you seriously. Yeah, right. Like your hey, father. You doing, pal? Your father would wear one of these. Hey, Curtis. Good to see you again, man. How you been? So what's going on, Joe? I like this look on you. It works really well. It looks really nice. Uh, we you were in a up party. Good. We were showing off. You know, you got to dress corporate. It's just this is that Lipton's cup of suit. <laughs> you know, you wear this thing because you think you're going to get money out Which of it. Which flavor is that? This one here is, let's see, I spilled jello on it earlier. Oh, uh, chicken noodle. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm having a good night tonight so far. Looks what like happened? it from what Why'd I can see. Why'd you show up? I, you know, they called me and they said, Stephen, we need you. Right away. Joey's in trouble. He's going in flames now. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm always here for you, Joey. You know I love being on well, your I, show. Well, I want to share something with you. I know, okay. I, you know, you're, you're a hysterically funny guy. Oh, thank you. I we have it. Curtis Sliwa here who's uh, in his he's own right. He's also a very funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if you Unless know you piss him off, then I, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, he, he's done some stand up. <laughs> Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't know that. You don't know this about him, I'm sure he's knocked some people down. <laughs> the audience was required to laugh. Oh, there you go. That's funny. <laughs> they required. Now, where did this take place? Can we set uh, it up a little bit? Actually, it was downtown uh, off Wall Street and Broad Street. Oh. So you had all the suits, the mockers, the muckety mucks, all the big whales. You know, they had no choice. I was in the room. If they didn't laugh, I'd give them a concrete facial. There we go. <laughs> you know what a concrete facial was? That forehead would hit the curb so oh fast. My gosh. The medulla and cerebellum would be spinning around like a I need a you at a few table. of my shows. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Put the arm on people. Uh, now, so how long uh, did you do for? Uh, there's another thing to talk about before we roll this tape. And that is a Stevens girlfriend is from Buffalo. Yep. Mm. Now you straightened Buffalo out. I did. I did. Not you, oh, Curtis. No, oh, you straightened out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I straightened out. Make it. Uh, well, actually, when I went up there to organize the Guardian Angels, the mayor there was Southside Jimmy Griffin. Yeah. And I he like was him. total controller. He shows up at the bus station because we were pounding the hound, taking the ground. He goes, Hey, hey, look, pal. I got one-way tickets for you back to New York City. <laughs> wow. I don't need your kind here in Buffalo. So we struggled. We found space in the Polish-American community center because Schlieva means plum. Most people don't know that. Yeah. And they adopted me. They said, oh, you're one of our own. But Southside Jimmy Griffin had me in and out of jail three times for breathing freaking air. I said, what's the charge, Jimmy? He says, breathing air. You know, for us, it'd be better if you're room temperature. <laughs> oh, gosh. I said, and for this, I shouldn't breathe air? So it's tough. And as you know, when it's 40 degrees below zero oh. and there's 20 foot of snow out, oh. it's difficult to breathe anyway. Oh. Well, there's only one mile of subway in Buffalo, you know. Oh, really? They built it to enhance the downtown. It goes from the University of Buffalo to stores that are closed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Curtis, Is Buffalo you didn't have a rock town? Did, no, did, 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 no. There was no underground crime. And lucky it didn't go to the American Niagara Falls. I mean, I know oh, there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of upset people because the bills aren't doing so well. They get a little riled up. Well, you know, we have, we have a, a shot. Oh, and yeah. it's heard oh. around the world. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's still, I'm a, I'm a New York Giants fan, and so, you know, Super Bowl too. 25, where I, I got to go there, which was cool, yeah. and they, they kick her around the world. In Buffalo, you still say wide right. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's an act of war. Well, my father always says that we paid $25 million for Jim Kelly, and all we got was a quarterback. You know, that old bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got some footage here of Curtis okay. Lee, uh, doing comedy. No. Oh, my goodness. We don't. It's a clip from him. A clip from where? From doing oh, what? Pilot a pilot you shot? Yeah, I was riffing. I was just riffing in you the camera. You tease. I wanted to see him doing comedy. Oh, I thought you were just... No, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's see what we got let's here. Let's take a look. All right, let's share it. We can share. Here's <laughs> Curtis. And if you don't know me by now, let me introduce you to Curtis Sliwa. I'm the guy who started the Guardian Angels. I know this city upside down, and I'm going to take you from the streets to the streets. More importantly, I know where all the bones are buried. Politicians out there, Democrats, Republicans, they know that I'm going to get right into the marrow of their bone because I know how crooked they are. You know, sometimes you go for their wake, you can't even close the casket. They're so crooked, you got to find a black and deck of power drill to drill them into the cemetery ground. And I'll tell you the names, and I'll tell you why. They're so crooked to the marrow of their bone. Subculture, I give you the hip hop monsters, the rap masters, and tell you the real deal. And most importantly, I'm gonna tell you about the vibrations in the streets of this city. The underbelly. I'm gonna take you right into the belly of the beast. 
You're going to have an X-Lax attack, but you'll be safe and sound in your home. I'm the one who's going to be taking all the risks. I'm the one that doesn't have Kool-Aid pumping through his veins and arteries. So get strapped in. It's going to be for the ride of your life, and you're going to learn about New York like you never knew it before. Thank you, Curtis. Well, it seems it's hard. Uh, no, that's, cool. that, that is stand-up, though. That really is stand-up. And it's funny because it's true. That's right. <laughs> and this is our current way of communicating. You know, we tell, we tell jokes, but we really tell the truth, and it's absurd. So the absurdity becomes the rule for the joke, I think. Did I say it right? I sound like I'm at NYU. Yeah, you, you're popping those five out words. You lost me. So you put a suit on him. You know what? I lost it. myself during that crap. <laughs> you know, I feel like I got to pay 52500 to Professor Joey Reynolds yeah. here. Yeah, like at NYU to become a violent. <laughs> See, it's the, it's the suit. <laughs> Tomorrow night, I'm going back to wearing a disc jock strap. Uh, no, That's okay. it. Well, you should wear the Zubis pants like you wore on the radio all the time. We yeah. should have, you know we had to have casual Fridays. And we should have like a radio dress Friday where we come in like we used to on the radio. Well, you know something, we you look. want to really turn this mother out, show up just with a jock strap on, and you will have a crowd here that will <laughs> multiply by the thousands. I'm going to make the naked cowboy look excited. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, he's yeah. not here. You know, he's been taking the winter off. I don't know. He must have made a lot of money last year. Well, things shrink up in the cold, so. <laughs> 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 well, it's bad gone, for advertising. You know? <laughs> he's gone for a couple months. Now. Curtis, I want to ask you in front of Steve here, because Steve's father is a reporter on the news, you know. Sure, sure. And that's why I brought it up. Oh, no, actually. I know. Well, I, I want to set it up yeah. for this, yeah. because I want everybody to know your father's an Emmy Award winning yep. news, news guy. Time, yeah. And a real aggressive journalist. In the nicest way, you know, yeah. it was not, I don't think he was antagonistic, but he was right there for the stories. Sure. Now, Curtis's story, as we all know, about uh, fighting crime, mm -hmm. and, and there's a little mob scene in here, which next time you come, you can tell the whole story, sure. because, you know, it's, I love the way you tell it, and it's going to take a while. But, uh, you know, the, the, the idea that no one has ever really been able to kill you, but they've tried to kill you, <laughs> is, yeah. is intriguing, because they always get their man. Even yeah. on every movie, it... They never miss anybody. Yeah, but you see, Joey, uh, I'm like lens lights. I don't know a camera that I don't want to make love to and a wow. microphone that I don't just want to wrap my hands around my 24-inch <laughs> big gams here because every time they've tried to kill me before, right, it's with baseball bats, man, they tooled me up so many times, I could actually authenticate the Joe DiMaggio signature on it. That's how close I saw it. Wow. And then when they capped me with hollow point bullets in the Oof. back of a cab in wow. which they were firing at my lower extremities. Now that's... Was your show that bad that night? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> that's, that, that's your three-piece set, and that's not the knife, the spoon, wow. and the fork. Oh, so why did they give up? On, on well, because, what do you, Joe, you think I just sit around there and let them do this? I'm going to fight. And they know that. So Now, do you think wearing bright red kind of helps kind of fly under the radar exactly? <laughs> it's what's the, what's not difficult to spot. Right. But, you know, you really are like Spider-Man or Batman, but you're real. You know, these are cartoon characters. but you really, Spider-Man's real? What are you talking about? Yeah, right. But, you know, but <laughs> I mean, what, mean? What, what is it with you? They don't, nobody can ever get you. You're real. Well, no, there have been a, a few attempts on my life, and, you know, obviously the guy I've has decided it's not time for me to punch mm. out the clock. But, you know, once it's happened once or twice, mm. and you, you're, like, totally frozen, right? You have that x lax attack, like mm. I described. After a while, you say, these blankety bikes are trying to kill me. I got to get the hell out of here. And then you're so angry. You're, <laughs> you mongolooch. And then, boom, it's time. Feet don't fail me now. I'm out of here. Do so, they you see, you, you get a little, a little bit of pain compliance, because that's the only language they really understand. Yeah. Well, then let me ask you this. Have they given up? Oh, they never give up. Are you kidding? Wow. They got the target on my back. You know, I'm like Target, right? <laughs> like Walmart goes after Target. I'm a Target today. But them. you're no threat to anybody right now. No threat, but I talk about the geriatric express so sipping psychotic killers of organized crime. Like right now. This guy, this Weisenheimer named Tommy Schatz Joyelli, what a name, Tommy Schatz, he goes in front of the federal judge, he's the acting boss of the Colombo crime family, so he's got soldiers out in the streets, and he's moaning and groaning about the commissary, you know, the food, the noodles, the fact that he doesn't have some real Parmesan cheese, so I say, yeah, I feel for the guy. <laughs> So I sent over two cases of sugar-frosted flakes after I found out he was a diabetic. Because I figured, hey, oh, he no. dropped dead, goes oh, straight no. to hell without an asbestos suit. Do you realize the guy is blogging now oh, from in jail? Sleazy Sleewa, he calls it. And he's 
calling me every name in the book. Meantime, he's got active soldiers out there. Basically, like it's translation, tricknology. Wow. He's basically telling them, hey, I wouldn't mind it if all of a sudden, you know, Sliwa would have catch a little lead in the back of the head. Oh, boy. And By he's doing way, this from in federal jail. We should probably make it clear the opinions expressed here are simply those of Curtis Sliwa. No way we're talking opinions of Stephen Scott, Joey Reynolds, NBC, or anyone in the near vicinity. Thank you very much. By the way, the only time I've ever, ever had a problem is they got me in the goiter. Yeah. I Ooh. can't figure out, though, where my goiter is. <laughs> I've gone to every doctor, every medical specialist, Columbia Presbyterian, you know, where there are no Presbyterians on my dad. <laughs> <laughs> the Hindus and Jews who operate you. I say, hey, Doc, I got a goiter problem. It's filled with hollow point bullets. They say, goiter? We never learned that in medical school. Are you still, did they get the bullets out or they still Oh, in? no, they're fragmentations. Wow. They're particular. They float all you over the You must be place. fun at airports. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> right, right, Although that's no, why I always choose, please yeah. be invasive yeah. with me, oh, pal. Right. <laughs> Oh, Touch it's my junk. Oh, it's better than internet porn. You just exactly. go to the airport these days. You it's like, you know. All right, we're going we're gonna to say goodnight to you. You've got to get up and do the morning show, and we got to get on with somebody who's really not being threatened or followed <laughs> <laughs> next to me. <laughs> I love you. I, I just love you. You're just great. You're great. You're one of a kind, and God bless you. You're great, Curtis. Well, thank you. I, and your work is unbelievable. Mm. Unbelievable. I agree. And, you know, the Man, city has become a me. really greater place because of you. Absolutely. I, mean, I don't mind saying it on the air. It's corny as it sounds. I don't, I don't mind saying it. It's true. Absolutely. It's a big difference than when, when you started and where we're at now. Yeah, it's you, definitely you're, a reason you're why. Gay. You're a great hero. All right. On that note, and let's leave it that way. We don't have to do punchlines. We're <laughs> going to take a break, and we'll come right back. I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. If you're like me, you probably don't have a lot of free time to exercise and keep yourself in shape. For me, the answer is the Ab Glider from Proform. I can't tell you how much I love this amazing machine. It's a great fat-burning cardio workout, too. And it's fun. Unlike other ab machines, the Ab Glider combines circular and crunch motions for a fast, fun workout of your entire midsection. You engage more muscles, get a better cardio workout, and burn twice the calories of other ab machines. I went from an 11 to a size 4. 20 inches total. It's really easy and it's fun. With this offer, you'll get an onboard workout computer, Elizabeth's three-minute rapid results DVD, and her amazing abs instructional DVD, plus her amazing abs eating guide, a $159 value free. Try the Ab Glider now for 30 days, risk-free, for as little as $14.95. If you're not totally satisfied, you can return it for a full refund. You can't find a better way to get better abs at a better price. And getting started is easy. Just call or go online to proform.com. Are you holding the remote right now? It's nice to be in control, isn't it? So fast forward to the good parts. Oh, hold on. We're getting to the good part. If you're receiving a structured settlement from a lawsuit, you know it is not easy to wait for payments, especially when it could be 10 or 20 years before you collect all your money. What you may not know is that you can skip ahead and receive a lump sum of cash now. Call CBC Settlement Funding for a free, no obligation offer about your structured settlement. Whether you access all or just a portion of your future payments, we put you in control so you can fast forward and collect your money now. If you need cash now, call the number on your screen and find out how CBC Settlement Funding can help. We'll guide you through the process so you can take control of your finances and get your money faster. Call CBC Settlement Funding today. I was uh, traveling for a long time until I had this dream to do this show and we started put the, putting this together uh, for this year. And in my, a part of my travels, uh, there's a good friend named Jerry Jampolsky who years ago was on Johnny Carson show. He was probably the first self-help author after Earl Nightingale who published his book called Love is Letting Go of Fear. It's like 40, 50 years ago, a long, long time ago. And, and of course, you know, since then we've had some great people, uh, including Wayne Dyer, who's a good friend. 
And uh, this gentleman here is uh, new to me, and Jerry asked me to, to meet him and to read his book here, which uh, I didn't have a chance to read it, to be honest about it. But Wilfred Welsh is his name, and we're going to bring him out. Now, you know, uh, Jerry has 65 attitudinal healing centers around the world. And you talk about the thing that you don't like the most about a child in a household is the attitude. And uh, what, what can change is the attitude when someone feels that they're not threatened and, and a myriad of reasons. It's a lot of, lot of work in this. And a country certainly can change its attitude. And I think we've, uh, have, we've gone through some changes. And, and many of the countries overseas have an attitude which uh, is getting adjusted too, mostly internally. So it's, it's very difficult to have this discussion without stepping into some political area. And I don't mean to do that because uh, there's certainly plenty of shows for it. And you already have maybe uh, your idea of what's going on in the world as we are fed the news. I don't buy it entirely. I like talking to people who think outside of the box. And I like people who travel in the box. Uh, one of the people I think is this gentleman here. And that's why we're bringing him on the air. And I wanted to bring him out here so uh, we can meet Wilfred Welsh. Here's Wilfred. Come on and walk through those big pearly gates. <laughs> this is like Nirvana without Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> or Hole. Hello. Hi, right, Wilfred. How are you, Joey? Come and sit over here. Okay, good to see you. Good, good. Come on. Okay. Hey, dude, nice to see you, man. Why, oh, don't, yeah. you, why don't you sit over here we, for a minute? Me or, sit? or him? I don't care. Wherever right. you sit. Can we get you a cocktail? So I can get there. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you All right, want no, 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 I want to have a little serious discussion. All right, okay. Tactics of Hope is Wilfred's uh, book here. He's the chairman of NOLS, which is the world's leading organization teaching skills on doing what? On wilderness? Well, it's, it's an, the National Outdoor Leadership School. It's a 40-year-old uh, school that uh, provides many people who have climbed Mount Everest, uh, where I've been up, and, and a lot of other things like that. So it teaches wilderness skills. It teaches you how to take, take on some of the world's major challenges physically and to do it safely, achieve your objectives, and also to leave no trace. So when we were on Mount Everest, we brought down 5,000 pounds of trash off the high camps. Wow. And the whole point was to clean up the mountain and to suggest to other mountaineers that if you get into the environment, you better leave no trace. So trying to change the ethic. I'm a of recycler. High Good. I believe in it, and I, I do it modestly because yep. I'm at home and I, I put things. Well, where that's they a belong. start. It's a start. I saw a special on NBC television, as a matter of fact, one of the off channels, you know, CNBC or MSNBC, one of them, uh, where they were showing uh, the beaches of Hawaii taking in the plastic from Japan. <coughs> and there's a gentleman who is retrieving all of that, and it's, it takes a long time for debris to reach Hawaii, but it's, it's, it's a shame because you have the most beautiful place in the world. They're still One upset about World War II, so this is their way of just getting back. I knew you were going to go to this <laughs> No, but you're right. Plastic, uh, plastic is one of the, the, the most serious problems that we have yeah. because we have these bottles that you use one time, you throw it away, you don't think about it. We now have these huge gyres in the middle of, I don't want to get too serious here, but the middle of the Pacific Ocean, way beyond Hawaii that's larger than Texas and has these little fragments that won't go away for a hundred years and it kills all the fishing and all the rest. So what we're doing is we're constantly polluting this world of ours and therefore it's the, uh, the fresh water we're polluting, uh, the marine resources we're polluting and we're doing it rather unconsciously. Yeah, and because so we're we just having our own way. Yeah, Plastic bags is another way. It's a very good example. Plastic I, surgery. It's got to control. Well, actually, <laughs> balloons, too, and even <laughs> condoms, Steve. I know you wanted to go for the cheap shots. Yes, you got to be uh, safe. So, you know, what happens now with, uh, with your work, which is besides, that's why I didn't want you to sit in the middle. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what happens with your work with, uh, with this uh, tactic of hope? Ta the, the, the tactics of hope. Tactics of hope. Yeah. Now, Jerry Jampolsky introduced me to you, you yeah. know, and, and I mentioned what you heard me on, you heard me on the air. Jerry has a place in Hawaii. He, he, yeah. he, he's there once a year, just about. More. And I've been there often. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, some very good friends. Many of them are in Maui because I was on the air there from yeah. here. And uh, Wayne Dyer has a place there. I mentioned Wayne. Yep. And there, Alan Cohen is another friend. You know, there's, there, this is a, a place where you really want to go because it's so special. And even Oprah bought 300 acres there. You know? Exactly, in Maui. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if she still uses her place in Hana, but she bought 300 acres. Right. Willie, Willie Nelson has a place there. Yeah. He probably smokes his lawn. I knew you were going to go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, but my favorite island is um, Kamanawanalea. That's a nice little place. Yeah, you can meet a lot of nice women. Very good joke. <laughs> It's hard to hold back. The, uh, the place where, where I really find my heart is wherever I find people who are in a good space. Right. And it doesn't have to be a vanity market. No, not at all. And it doesn't have to be a sunshine state. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of found a space here where I have a good relationship with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's unusual, yeah. you know, to, to be in a city like this where you think there's nobody pays attention. Yeah. Well, you know, there are a lot of Jerry John Polskis out there. Jerry John Polsky, which I like to emphasize, right. he's such a good friend. But there are a lot of people under the radar that you don't hear about because the newspaper is always talking about the negative stuff. You're, you're, really, you're one of them. You're one of them. Real, thank you. That are really doing good quietly under the radar. And uh, there are millions of them around the world and I got really excited starting to look and see how many of them were there really were and finding out what they're doing and I also found out that that uh, there are millions and millions of people who want to really be part of the solution but don't know how and so I wrote the book by going around the world and, and really identifying 27 people in health education human rights microcredit, etc., who are doing under the radar, as I said, extraordinary work. And they're doing, they're doing it in a way that's very different than the old way of, gee, Ford Foundation, if I help 100 people, would you give me so much money? Right. And next year, wow, if I help 500 people, will you give me three times more? Now they're coming up with new ways of solving old problems around social environmental problems. And so I wanted to really focus in on this. And it's something that's really caught on, not just the book, but social entrepreneurship which is private people doing public good because corporate because governments as we can see they can't possibly get the job done sufficiently well, they don't have the bandwidth no, they don't so, have the money they so don't have where, the talent where are you coming from where are you what what where, what did you do to start this um, well i was a u.s diplomat i was a lot of other things uh, and i spent all my life in different professions that are all been international but in january 2004 three of us got really disturbed with how the world was turning. And so we asked Desmond Tutu, I, who I happen to know reasonably well, because I'd done some con conflict resolution work with him in Northern Ireland. And I said, would you join me in Ubud, Bali, which is the capital or the, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, cultural capital of, of Bali, and we'd bring together those people who were really concerned about issues like extreme poverty, human rights, social justice, and the environment. And what happened was that 425 people from 26 countries showed up. And I went, mm -hmm. whoa, this is really interesting. And uh, so we had it for five days, and we're focusing on this stuff. And so I said to uh, uh, the archbishop, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. So in two years later, we did it again in Bali. And uh, 625 people from 40 countries showed up. And I began to realize how many people really want to join something really that's want to join something that is very very positive yeah. and so I said and the other thing that I found that, that blew my mind actually is how many young people are really committed to this stuff mm -hmm. uh, so the, the fellow that's back here I'm the author but the fellow who did a lot of the work was was 23 years old graduated from Middlebury College His name is David Hopkins and he and I seek to demonstrate the power of intergenerational collaboration yeah. Okay. And we wrote this book together. I was the one that flipped around the world. The book, fascinatingly to me, actually out of my pocket, and I'm a not a rich, wealthy man, cost $85,000 out of my pocket. Right. And the reason you're traveling around the world, you're doing all the interviews, et cetera, and it adds up. Well, you know, John McEwen, who's right in the yep. background here tonight. I've been his talking brother, to John. Well, his brother Good lived guy. in Maui, and his brother was the manager for Steve Martin, as you know, yep. probably. He, he most likely shared that with you. Mm -hmm. And, of course, John went to school with Steve, too, which mm -hmm. uh, puts them all in the family together. But his brother is a conscientious guy who, uh, who moved away from Hawaii. I think he's in Arizona or something right now. But, you know, it doesn't matter where you live. That's what I was getting at. You know, I could do this in a coffee shop, just like you know. You've been around the world, and you know that... that uh, uh, the youth, pe the youth right now is crying for some sort of modeling. Yeah, and the countries need to be model countries. So my my thing, which is not to take away from tactics of hopes, I think it's a great hope, 
is that I think Iran should be modeled by Turkey, for instance. Right. I think Russia should be modeled by England and how they gracefully left Hong Kong. Yeah. I think there's models uh, available in a, in, a, in a giant scale rather than an individual scale, which you're working on as yeah. well. Yeah. And it's not about money. It's about its willingness. It's not about willingness money. Willingness is the key. And heart. Well, you have to have a passion. Yeah. And if you have a passion, you'll have the willingness and you'll get anything done. You can, I got this thing on the air here against all odds. This yeah. is a Phil Collins move. Yeah. This is against all odds. Nobody ever thought we were going to sit in Times Square in a studio and do a late night show on NBC. Nobody yeah. thought that. They yeah. didn't think it was possible at all. But you know what? Mother Teresa said it very well. They asked her about building an orphanage. She wanted to build an orphanage. She had 10 rupee. Yeah. And, and, and the uh, uh, chancellor at the time or the minister said to her, well, you know, with 10 rupee, you can't do anything. She said, with 10 rupee and God, I can do anything. Right. Mm. And that's what it is. You know, you have to have faith. Yeah. And a person of faith can move mountains and you know the one you climbed. Yeah. Or many, you yeah. probably climb more than Everest. Yeah. But, you know, there's a, whole, there's a whole generation of people who really are not bridled by the old rules. And they're not just run by money. So no. these young people, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a powerful segment, but it's, and it's a small segment. But these young people, they have a lot of things that our generation or my generation didn't have. Number one, they are very clear about the problems. Secondly, they are very collaborative in a world in which people aren't collaborative. Well, also the technology, we have the internet now, and that's, and that's third, a huge that's difference. The third huge. is they are connected yep. and they're using it very, very effectively. It's amazing. Okay. And I, I, I so admire your work. Thanks. And I, and I did not read Tactics of Hopes, although it was sent to me. Yeah. And I want to thank you for being here, and I hope, I hope we help you in some way. I don't know how yet, because you never know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's exactly the you're, way it is. You're helping by having me on the show. And, and that that's at least gives you a little bit of a of a, an inch here. Yeah. And I and inch by inch it is a cinch. I think Robert Schiller said that. Uh, the tactics of hope. The tactics of hope. It's the tactics of hope. How social entrepreneurs are changing our world. And three years ago, there were about in business schools. There are probably only twenty business schools that were or schools that were doing anything on tact on uh, social entrepreneurship. Now there are two hundred and forty. It's, some, it's, it's, a, it's a movement now in human history that is just really taking off. And you Private never, people doing you never good. retired from your diplomacy. No. Well, You're still in the diplomatic life. corps. Yeah, <clears throat> just a little kid. I got a long, long ways to go. Never got it out of you. Yeah. So anybody wanting to see, you can go and you can get uh, this Wilfred's book. It's uh, a New York Times bestseller as of tomorrow. <laughs> uh, WilfredWelsh.com. Wilfred Welsh, W-E-L-C-H is how you spell it that way. Not that's the, right. Not like the orange juice. Oh, that's right. Or yeah. the grape juice. Yeah. Thank you so much for being okay, here. Right. I really appreciate your work. Good. It's Delighted. wonderful. Okay, thanks. Uh, and I, I consider myself to be a, a, a news proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. It's a crappy job. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> uh. Hi, I'm Joey Reynolds. I got a brand new show. It starts on television after about 14 years on radio on NBC's New York Nonstop. It's called All Night. That's when we're on. Between midnight and 2, Monday through Friday. And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Did you hear that? What's that? I said I was at Berkeley in the 60s at graduate school. Well, we have a couple of guests who have just joined me, and we're talking uh, amongst each other, which is okay. I mean, this is something that you do when you kill time. And uh, believe me, nobody knows how to kill time better than I do. <laughs> I've been killing it for a number of years. Yeah. Put the gun down. But I, you know what? God invented time so that we wouldn't run into each other. <laughs> and, and, and we got John McEwen here who's actually pondering that thought. I am. I'm wondering, what is he talking about? <laughs> you always think that. Martha Redbone is here tonight with us as well. And Martha's going to join us. She's got a kimono. 
and uh, and it's a silk one, so I think you have the Hawaiian look that we were talking about <laughs> earlier. That is the Hawaiian look. Aloha. It is. Aloha. <laughs> yeah. Now, Martha, where are you from originally? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, that's close to <laughs> Maui. Aloha. Hey, <laughs> don't <laughs> But I, you, also, you, but, I, but I also lived in Appalachia. Oh, I see. Kentucky. So you were in a poorer section of town. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's from the Lower East Side of Appalachia. Oh, that's right. <laughs> now, John, John and, and I are friends, and uh, you performed with them once before on the radio show. Yes, I did. You guys uh, collaborate, I think is a good word. Uh, John is an intellect who has gone wrong. <laughs> and uh, he has with, with, with him to his right, if you're looking at the television that way, I guess your right is your left on TV, so I shouldn't be saying right or left, uh, except if you're on Fox. And uh, Stephen Scott is here. He's to my... You're right. I, I'm always right. Audience left. <laughs> and Wilfred, <laughs> this have you met each other? Out. You know, uh, this is the uh, entrepreneurship of hope, John. We were talking about that. Now, have you made enough money to be socially conscientious? I'm trying to figure out that intellect comment you made. <laughs> I'm still on that. See, John, John went to school with Steve Martin. You know that, don't you, Stephen Scott? Yes, I do. Yeah. We talked about his book. I read Steve Martin's book, which I thought was really terrific, especially as a, as a comedian. It was Born an excellent Standing book. Up. Yeah, great yeah. book. Really and great John book. just finished an album with Steve this last year. He recorded with Steve Martin, not Steven Scott. Right, yes. I don't play the banjo. No. <laughs> and they, they have been doing songs together, right? Yeah, since 1970. Well, actually, we started playing when we, when we were working in Disneyland as teenagers. Yeah, and, uh, which they talk about in the book. Yeah, it was a, an interesting thing because we had no idea we were going to even get out of Orange County. We just wanted to, <laughs> and, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so what are you going to play tonight? What do you got for us tonight? You're not doing one of those Steve Martin songs, are no, you? No, no, not at all. Um, uh, that, that album is... Uh, La so last year. <laughs> oh yeah, right. You've been on the road with it, so you're not. It's not last year. He's on the road with it. Pick up your banjo. Come on. Okay, I'll go get so it. So John was uh, was with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, which still goes on, and they will go on forever because they crossed over from country to uh, uh, pop to blues. I mean, you guys are all over the map with did, good sounds. We did 75 cities last year. You're great. Now, what are you going to play? Come on, so we don't run out of time. This oh, is wow. a. Uh, about a hundred year old song that we want to take you back to what it was like sitting on the porch somewhere in Appalachia. That's right. This is a song called Undone in Sorrow and it was written by Ola Bell Reed. Still among the flowers that lay 
I want to get sung before we leave, so we don't we, we don't cheat you on time here. Who do you got coming out here? You got Pardon? someone else? Are we going to do another song? Yeah, I didn't know we were running out of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, John Mark Fletcher. All okay. right. John Mark Fletcher. We got John out here. Come on, John. Come on in here. And we're gonna. This is gonna take us out tonight because we're squashed up against time. It's either that or come back another night, and I don't want that to happen. Martha, thank you. Thank Martha's you. Martha's one of the few Mark. Native Americans who does not own a casino. <laughs> So she's working on it. All right, so what are you going to play, man? Yeah, we got a little bit of... A Civil War song called Soldier's Joy. This is from 1840. All right, so John McEwen taking us out. You see them in Terrytown in Chatham, New Jersey in April. And I want to thank Stephen Scott for being here tonight. And Wilford, thank you very much. And hope, hope is our, is our, it springs eternal. And I can't wait for spring. And John McEwen, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Joy. Uh, and I, what's his name? This John guy? Mark Fletcher. John Mark Fletcher. We, we met before. We have. I've eaten your, uh, your cheesecake. My cheesecake. cheesecake. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was in a leather bar in the village. <laughs> <laughs> With that banjo, I, I don't think you. you'd go there. Yeah, I remember you. <laughs> Let a smile be your umbrella, but don't get a mouthful of rain. There are 13,000 cabs in New York City, but there's only one that pays you. Climb into the cash cab, and I'll quiz you all the way to your destination. As the meter clicks, the questions get harder, and the stakes get higher. If you get stumped, you shout out for help on the phone oh, or off the street. Can I ask a question? But be careful, because in this rig, it's three strikes and you are out. So what do you say? You in? Not the father. You are the father. Uh, I apologize for um, the things I put you through. I know I can't take it back, but I can try to make it better. So, he apologized, stand-up guy, and despite claiming he would never date Lisa again, guess what? They got together, and they're together now. So, if they're together, why are they here on a cheating show? Because Lisa suspects 
that Montego is now cheating with her own sister, Helene. <laughs> Her, your sister is a lesbian. She's a trisexual because she's trying my man. I'm a lesbian. You're crazy. You are crazy. You're crazy. She's trying your man. Yes, she is. Yes, she, yes, she is. They also go out and play basketball. Yes, they go out and play basketball. But I'm really wondering what type of ball is she really shooting? <laughs> So think he's doing it with other women? Yeah, I think he's doing it with other women. If he's over friendly with my sister, well, yeah, he got women, not me. Cheating with other women. You've only been back together a couple of months. Yes, I tried to work it out. But Mari, today I'm here. I'd rather know now than later. You gotta find out. What'd you find in your room? Secrets. She wears <laughs> fruit of the lungs. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah. Here's Montego. Watch what he had to say. When the test came back and proved that I was Heavenly's father, I was excited. I apologized to Lisa. I tried to make it work by getting back together. The problem is, Lisa think I'm cheating now with her own sister, Helene. Helena's a lesbian. And the last time I checked, they don't do men. Helena is not interested in me. I sure as hell ain't interested in her. The truth is, Helena like one of the boys. We go out, play basketball, drink a little bit. I mean, hell, she's family. After the last show, I just knew we put all this craziness behind us. But uh, she's acting more crazy than she was last time. Here's Montego.